Hey guys, Wayne Sutton. Welcome to another online sermon here at the thesecondadam.tv. That video you just watched. When you think about the things we saw last year, 2015, first of all, let me say Happy New Year. It's going to be a blessed year. If you missed a prophetic word for 2016, go back on the thesecondadam.tv and check it out. The prophetic word God gave me for 2016 It's going to really... I believe, motivate you, excite you, and empower you. Now, 2015, what did we see? We saw the wars. We saw terrorism on the rise. We saw racism on the rise. We saw so much destruction. We saw separation. We saw separation between people, between political uh, parties. We saw separation even in the body of Christ. Now, without going into a prophetic message on that. That's for another season. Those who coach with me, those who counsel with me, we've talked about this. I want to talk about this year, 2016, and I want you to watch this video. I want you to share this video. I want you to comment on this video. I read every comment. I read every comment from here in my office, and I will reply to you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to begin to find yourself excited. Let me say that again. Begin to find yourself. The key words there are find yourself you got to find yourself excited. you got to find yourself encouraged. For the 2016 is going to come and go as every other year. What will you do with it? What will you do with it? If you're going to have just another year where you look at terror, you look at war, you look at hate, or are you going to say, no, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to coach, mentor. I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to do what it takes to have a new year. So we're going to jump in, and I'm going to be reading out of, actually, I'm going to take a moment here and just say, check this Bible out. It's a, a, just a great Bible that was given to me. It was actually sent to me, and I'll, pl I'll post a link here below me so you can go check it out for yourself. This Bible, what I love about this is it's not just the 66 books, but it's a lot of the other books, the Maccabees, uh, a lot of the books that we had even up until the 1800s that have been stripped away from the King James Version. Now, I don't want you hate mail on that. If you're a King James only, God bless you. That's fine. But this one also, instead of using the word Lord, it'll actually use Elohim, where it should be Elohim, or Adonai, it should be Adonai. And, and so it really goes into a lot of the original translation. And so it's one you got to study. You can't just read it, God, that was neat. You really have to get into the word, and I love that. So again, I'll post the link. Be sure to pick this Bible up. It's the best hundred bucks you can spend, I promise you. So pick it up, and I really hope it helps you. A lot. So, and and now I want to jump into this here. I want to jump into Philippians. I'm going to be reading Philippians 3 8 through 14. Philippians 3 8 through 14. And as we read this, we're looking at Paul writing to the church. And he, he right naturally in this church, he's talking about the ability to look ahead instead of looking behind. He's talking about moving ahead. And I love this. It says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yeshua, my Adonai. Oh, I love that. For I am suffered the loss of all things and do count them but... I love this. This is for you religious people going to love this. I count them as dung. Do I need to tell you what dung means? There's a, there's a really uh, religious word for it, and there's a not-so-religious word. But I'll just tell you this. Paul was saying all of that stuff in the past, it's a pile of... There, we'll leave it at that. That's what he was saying it was. What a great you know religious text here. So I count it all as dung, all for loss. Oh, listen for the excellency that I may win. And listen, they may be win in Christ and not of his own righteousness, the righteousness of God. And this is just an amazing as we go through this. Um, and here's what I love about it. Paul had suffered so many things. When, when we look at the Apostle Paul, this is a great person to look at in 2016. The Apostle Paul was stoning Christians. He was murdering Christians. You know, I don't know, as I grew up in the childhood, I thought about stoning. I saw, had an image in my mind of people throwing little stones and it would hit somebody and knock them out and then they died. Um, if you've ever seen, and unfortunately I have, if you've ever seen someone being stoned to death, it is a very brutal, very bloody, very horrific sight. So Paul was there allowing that, condoning that, promoting that. Paul, or Saul as he was known then, was that terrorist that we see today. 
they were out, they possibly beheading, but we know he was stoning and killing Christians. And what happened? He went from that to being the one that wrote most of our New Testament. What did he do? He said, I will not look at those things. I will not look at the things that I've suffered. I will not look. Here's an important part. I'm jumping ahead in my sermon. I will not look at the things that I did that were great. Come on. Some of you are going, wait, you don't know what happened. I preached three years ago. I, I, I prayed for somebody seven years ago. Let me tell you what God did. Well, great. Amen. But what about 2016? What about today? Because Paul said, I'm not going to look at those things. I'm going to count the things. That is dung. I'm going to count it as a big pile of, and I'm going to move on in life. So listen to me. Let me read it again. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He counts them as dung. In order that I may gain Christ to be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, no, that comes from the law, that came from the Torah, but that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. If I'm going to preach one thing this year, it's the Jesus Christ that died and was resurrected. And may share his sufferings. Paul said, I may I share in his sufferings. Become and like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Whoa, if you'll slow down, slow down and read that, it'll make you really question what you believe. Are you willing to die for your gospel? Are you willing to die for your Christ? Now, though, that's not a very happy sermon for 2016. Hang on, it gets better. Now that I have attained... Not that I have obtained this or, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 2016, I want you to do something. I want you to forget about the things you've done in the past. Forget about the limitations. Forget about the beliefs. Forget about your sin. You think you're a sinner. Have you went out and thrown stones? Have you beheaded Christians? Have you been the jihad Johnny that Apostle Paul was here? Have you been that bad? He said, I'm the chief of sinners. But he said, I refuse to look at that. I refuse to look at that. I refuse to move ahead and strive for God. What about you in 2016? Have you made New Year's resolutions? Come on. I know some of you have already emailed me. Hey, Pastor Wayne, some of you coach with me. We've set up New Year's resolutions. We set up something called SMART goals. And let me go ahead and tell you this too. Anyone that contributes this month to the second item, anyone that helps with the second item in any donation, you're going to receive our iSMART Goal Achievement Program. I Smart Goal Achievement Program. It's not available for sale. I will send it to you with any donation. So I wanted to let you know that because I believe New Year's resolu resolutions are important. I believe in achieving goals are important. But how do we do it? How do we do it? Here's the thing. It's human nature. It's human nature to want to do better. It's human nature. I want to lose weight. I want to make more money. I want to lead people to Christ. I want to spend more time with God. What is it that your New Year's resolution is? Because that's what Paul was saying. I'm not looking at what I have done. Maybe I lost 20 pounds. Maybe I lost 30 pounds. Maybe I uh, made more money last year, but that's okay. Maybe I didn't. But what am I going to do in 2016? That's the key for you. It's human nature to want to do better, but it's human nature to fail. How many of you said, I'm going to read this word. I'm going to read it from beginning to end. And then you got into Deuteronomy, or maybe you got into Numbers, or maybe you got into Lamentations. My goodness, you got like, that's boring, that's depressing. So and so begat so and so. And yeah, I'll skip that. So you didn't read the whole word. How many of you? Resolutions last about three days to three weeks. New Year's resolutions last three days to three weeks. Why am I not going to the gym? We have a local, we have a gym here in our community. This I'm not going this week because everyone will be in there. They'll be sweating and huffing and puffing, and you know what'll happen? I'll just wait two more months. They're all gone. They're back at home watching TV, and I'll go to the gym then. So it doesn't take long for us to fail. Why is that? So I, I want to talk to you about from the Apostle Paul here, but I also want to talk to you about taking that truth that Paul had and bring it in into your 2016. So what's your resolution? Are you going to eat better? Are you going to cut out ice cream? I'm not. Are you going to quit smoking? Are you going to read the Word of God more? What is it that you want to do? If you Here's a couple of keys. Here's a couple of keys. Number one, forget what happened in the past. Never go back to that. 
Never. Thank God that you overcome. Thank God that you went through. And now you're going to move forward. Forget about your failures. You confess them to God. Lord, I messed up here. Lord, you know who I am. You know the mistakes I've made. I confess my sin to you. I confess my failure to you. But now it's time for me to move on. Amen. Listen, I love this. God told Peter in Acts chapter 10, what God has called clean, no longer consider unholy. What God has considered clean, no longer consider unholy. There's an article in Charisma News. If you're watching this Charisma News, you probably won't like me, but that's okay. And this this author wrote in here, why we shouldn't drink alcohol as a Christian. He wrote all, he added another 50 laws to the law, the 600 and something laws we have in the Torah. He added about 50 more laws. He went on this rant about what we should and shouldn't do. But the Apostle Paul said, let no man tell you what the taste, touch, or drink. Hey, okay, so we're not going to jump into law. We're not going to jump into legalism in 2016. We're going to jump headstrong into the unfathomable, just sloppy grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. The freedom that's in it. What God has called clean, let no man consider unholy. Because, I love this in Psalm 103, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. I am not a sinner in the eyes of God. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I'm a child of the living God. What about you? Are you a child of the living God or are you simply a meager sinner saved by grace? Come on, it's mindset. It's mindset, guys. You never let past failures define you. You never let past failures define you. I'm going to tell you something I've never shared publicly. Years ago, I met my wife. I met my wife, fell in love, prayed, Lord, I'm going to marry this girl. Lord, show me a sign. He gave me a prophetic sign. So then I was like, well, Lord, okay, we're going to get married. But I I didn't feel worthy. I'd been divorced. I'd gone through life. I had run from God. I, I said, Lord, I don't feel worthy. I truly said, Lord, she's too good for me. Those who know Candace, you know she is. She's too good for me, Lord. I'm not that person. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, you're as righteous as anyone because your righteousness is in me. See, when you've been born again, you never, never go back to your past failures. Never. The enemy will bring it up. The enemy will try to bring those past failures. He'll say, you didn't do this in 2015 or 14 or 13. What do you think you'll do it this year? You have to say, no, that doesn't define me. I am a child of the living God. When Paul looked back, he saw a lot of things he was ashamed of. He had blasphemed the name of Jesus. He persecuted the church. He opposed the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he was no longer that man. He had an experience. He had a reborn, hallelujah, Holy Spirit experience. God didn't see him that way anymore, and he doesn't you either. Amen? Come on. Do I look back? Sometimes I look back, sure. But what do I look back for? I look back and I say, Lord, thank you for delivering me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for taking me from where I'm at, from where I was at to where I'm at now. The Bible says those who've been forgiven much, love much. Maybe that's why I love the Lord, because I have been forgiven much. What about you? We never want to dwell on the past. We can look at it and say, thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Thank you for setting me free. But I'm moving forward and you can too. And past failures are not all we need to forget, though. As I said earlier, even your past successes. Someone come up to me today and they said, hey, I read your book. What a great book. This is how in hell can I change? I'm like, thank you. And they were talking about the book. I said, you know, that's great. But I wrote that book six years ago. If I'm going to hold on to that book and just look at that as my success, then I, you know what I did yesterday? I released another book on Amazon. But I can't say, well, hey, I just released another book. Amen. No, I must go now. What's next? What is God calling me to do next? So we can't look at past successes. Great. Me and Candace had a great marriage. But if I just left it at the, mar- at the altar, then we have a problem. You must work through every issue. You must build upon love upon love. And in your life, what did you do last year that's great? Or the last three years that were great. But is that going to define you or are you going to move to another level? Or are you going to go to another level? Amen. So this is really having the goal in sight. I'm going to try to keep this sermon short. I could go for hours with this, but would you really watch it? Come on. We might jump on this again next week. But I really want to talk about this. It's not what you've done. It's not what you haven't done. It's what you're looking at. What can I do this year? And here's the question. Here's your takeaway. What can I do this year to bring honor and glory to Christ Jesus? What about that? What are you going to do this year? What are you going to, that doesn't mean you're going to automatically go feed the poor. That doesn't mean you're going to start a ministry. Maybe you will. Maybe that's what God's calling you to do. But 
You can honor Christ by the way you treat your family. You can honor Christ by the way you build your business. What are you going to do this year that's going to increase, that's really just going to bring value, glory, honor to Christ Jesus? No one would have found Paul, fought with Paul if he said, you know, I've done a lot. I've set up a lot of churches. They've beaten me. They've shipwrecked me. They've thrown me in prison. I, I think I'm just going to retire. I'm just through with this. New year, time to retire. No one would have really, I mean, belittled him. But what did Paul say? What did Paul say? He said, I'm going to finish this race. I'm going to finish this race. He looked at it as a race. He looked at it as a marathon. He looked at it as something you continue doing. You move on. He said, I haven't attained what I want to attain. I've not reached a place where I want to be. I haven't finished yet. Paul wasn't satisfied until he gave his last breath. What about Jesus? Hey, I've raised the dead. I've done miracles. Fed 5,000 people with a couple fish sticks. I'm done. What if he said, I'm done? I'm going to retire. I know the cross is coming. I think I'll retire before all that comes. No, he completed his purpose. He completed his mission. 2016 is a year for you to accomplish things. I'm telling you, some of you watching this, some of you watching this, you'll finally write that book. Some of you will finally go back to school. Some of you will finally submit your life to Jesus Christ. There's some of you watching this right now. You haven't submitted. You've taught religion. You've gone to church, but you haven't fully surrendered to Christ, and this is your year. 2016 could be your year. Will you embrace it? Will you embrace 2016? Will you decide, I'm not going to look at the news. I'm not going to be brought into oh, the media. The media will make you so fearful of terrorism. They'll bring hate in your heart, racism in your heart. Will you say, I refuse to look at that, and I, I instead will go back into the Word of God. I'll go back and I will honor my God in 2016. Will you do that this year? Do you need a fresh start? Here's something I want you to hope you're taking notes. The beauty of church, I church, you can instantly hit pause, go grab pen, paper, share this video while I'm mentioning that. Share this video. But here's some things I want you to look at. Number one, I want you to forget the things that are behind you. Forget the things that are behind you. That doesn't mean you wipe them out of your memory. It means you decide, decide to stop focusing upon them, meditating upon them. Okay, that happened. So be it. That's history. It's over with. It's done. Focus on the things that are before you. Focus on the things that God's calling you to do. Focus on what God has placed within your heart. What do you want to do this year? And fulfill the things that are beyond you. You've got to have a dream. I've said it, guys. If you're writing out your New Year's resolutions, take the big goals and make them small. So you can. If you, I don't want to lose 100 pounds, can you lose 10 pounds? I need to make another $100,000 next year. Can you make $10,000? I need to start you know, a business. Can, can you order some business cards? Can you set up a website? What are you going to do? Make the big goals small that you can actually accomplish them. I'm not going to teach here on this. This is a, too much to teach in one sermon. But then, here's something else. Have the goal that's bigger than you. If your goal is only what you can do without Christ, then it isn't big enough. Come on. I, the, if I told you the dreams of the second Adam and where this studio was going, the things we'd have, you say, Wayne, how are we going to do it? And I'd say, I have no clue, but he does. I have no clue what you're going to do, but he does. Have a dream so big that it's beyond you. When I wake up in the morning, I know I need to accomplish this because my wife, my children depend on me. I need to accomplish this because this is what God has told me to do. He visited me in a dream, said, this is what I'm to do, and I must do it every day. That I will do it to the day I die. What about you? If you found that, you say, I'm going to do this until the day that I die. Whatever it is, if you haven't, then child of God, you need to go back into the Word. You need to go back into the Word, and you need to spend time with the Father and find that purpose. Maybe your year, maybe 2016 for you, is just to find your purpose, to find your destiny. Maybe that's what it is for you. To say, Lord, speak to me. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray until you speak to me, Lord. Some of you have fasted and prayed for years. It's time to feast. Pick up the food. Worship God. Amen. This is your year. I believe if you'll look into the Word of God. We're using the Apostle Paul, but there's so many more examples of people that said, I'm never going to look back, but I'm only going to move ahead. I want you to decide. I want you to make a decision. 
to eradicate fear, to eradicate hate, to walk away from prejudice, to walk away from religion that holds you back and say, Jesus Christ is my everything. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to bless him. Can you do that this year? Amen and amen. One way to do it. Thank you for being part of the secondadam.tv and this online church. That's what we're here for. We're here to bless you. We're here to equip you. We're here to take you to another level. I want you to do something. Go to the second Adam right now. and It'll say need prayer. I want you to bid in your prayer request. Name, email address, and your prayer request. Say, Pastor Wayne, this is what I want to do in 2016. I will pray for you personally. I will pray over your prayer request. Our prayer team will pray for you. I want you to bid in the comments. If you're looking at this on Facebook, there's comments. If you're looking at this on YouTube or LinkedIn or whatever it is, Place your comments. I will pray over every single prayer request. I'll respond back to you. This can be your year, but it's time to make a determined effort. I'm going to do it. And decisions, listen, life doesn't change over time. Decisions are made just like that. Then you say, I'm going to stick with that decision. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this the best year yet. I want to pray for you. In fact, I want to pray over you right now. In the name, and I'll pray over every prayer request that comes into the ministry. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your goals, your dreams, your achievements are just highlighted by the Holy Spirit. There's a fire within you to see that it is done. I pray over everyone that has sickness in your body. We command sickness to leave in Jesus' name. Let 2016 be your year for health and wellness in Jesus' name. I break off the spirit of poverty, the spirit of debt, and I say unto you that you shall prosper. You shall prosper in 2016. Let it be a year of growth. Yet let it be a year of experience. Let it be a year of blessing in Jesus' mighty name. For those of you, listen to me, some of you are watching this, you haven't been to church. Come on. This is an online church, but you forsake, you have forsaken the assembly of the saints. Quit making excuses and find that body. If they're not perfect, guess what? There's not a perfect one. We're all, we know in part, see in part. We're all growing from glory to glory. If you haven't found a perfect one, you're not perfect either. Find a church, get involved, find one you can believe in. Continue to be here with the second Adam or your online church here. We honor you and we bless you for that. Amen. I want you to, again, share this video. Let other people know that the kingdom of God is alive. The kingdom of God is real. That we're here for you. We are here for you. For our partners, again, this month, everyone that your partners, you're going to automatically receive our iSmart Goal Achievement Program. If you're not a partner yet, partner with us. There's three levels. Go to the secondadam.com at the top it'll say about us. Partner with the ministry. There's three levels. Pray. Say, Holy Spirit, 2016, I'm going to change my life. Which level do I partner? Because different levels have different benefits. And we'll talk it. We actually you can look on there and see that. And including receiving monthly counsel from me in, in, over email or phone, as well as the resources we're talking about. So I honor you for that. Those who have paid your tithes and love offerings, you're helping us take the second Adam into the world. And I believe in you. I believe in you because I believe in the Christ within you. Let 2016 be a great year. Look at the past only to say, thank you for delivering me. I count it all as a big pile of dung as Apostle Paul said. I'm moving towards greater things. I believe in you and you can move towards greater things too. Until next Sunday, be here again, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe in you. We're praying for you. God bless.